Hey everybody and welcome to Intensive Driving Courses NI. We're going to look at another drive in and around the Newton Ards area. And uh, again, as with normal and previous videos, we're just gonna go on what we see. And uh, as the uh, these videos are designed to really enhance uh, driving, uh, this is not gonna be teaching you any different procedures than your normal current instructor or family friend is teaching at the time. And we'll just basically develop situations and work with them as we can. So today's route that we're going to take is going to head from Jubilee Road here um, down towards the town centre and out towards sort of Crawfordburn Road direction and then up uh, Bradshaw's Bray towards uh, the dual carriageway and then back down into Ards. So again we're starting off from Jubilee Road, a fairly industrial type area. So just your normal move off procedure, always remember to do your blind spot as your last check. That covers the dead area that's maybe not in the mirror. And uh, off we go. So in previous videos, I've maybe mentioned that Jubilee Road's a fairly industrial type area, just leading from the driving test centre, which is just behind us. Um, so expect normal industrial estate hazards, plenty of other learner drivers with different abilities, of course, and uh, a lot of sort of larger vehicles. And uh, again, maybe people that are not familiar with the area looking for certain types of businesses, the likes of tiles, DIY, etc. So we're traveling down. Uh, road conditions obviously are good today. It's a good dry day. So a two second gap really is sufficient with vehicles in front, as a minimum. Obviously, if you can leave more, that's fine. Now, Jubilee Road's sort of quite sort of rough in areas just on the road surface, obviously, that's not marked for the majority of it. So, you know, normal position as you're passing your parked vehicles and a meter from the curb or so as you go down. Always try to be about 15 seconds ahead of yourself. Um, so you've maybe got sort of, you know, two moves ahead, um, going around parked vehicles, etc., or maybe having to stop. Trying to deal with hazards when you reach them is not advised. So you always want to be that anticipation, sort of similar to the hazard perception test, that will come up. So first uh, junction we've got with traffic lights here, we're going to go to the left. So our normal approach sequence, um, it's left turn only, indicated there by the filter arrow, so indicating it's optional. And always remember, plenty of checks, you know, look for the two wheel road users as well as the four wheel. We've got our green light here, which would proceed if it's clear to do so. Always anticipating it could change. But as we travel around, we're now going to enter into Cumber Road. And I've taken up the right hand lane because in this route I'm going to go straight on at the lights and as you can see by the traffic lights again it's a left turn only. But if you end up in the left lane even if you planned it or not go left and then sort of alter your route if you do make a mistake. So remember traffic lights the straight on could vary between left only both or right. Traveling down now into South Street very, very tight with parked vehicles here. So I'm doing in around about 15, 18 or so, second year in the vehicle I'm driving. And I'm looking for car doors opening, looking underneath the vehicles for any feet or wheels, um, because sometimes you will not see certain road users over the roof. And also the tint of windows can disguise quite a bit as well. Uh, coming down to a set of traffic lights here, which are on red, I'm going to go left. So uh, early sort of checking all around the vehicle. We can see there we've got our lane. Black vehicle just taking part of it up, so just stand out slightly. And again, just easing in. And remember that old tires and a bit of tarmac should the vehicle in front break down. Now you can go straight on in this lane, so that's why I'm giving an indicator. Uh, but an indicator basically is to inform or warn. Traveling into a new road, always expect queue, so you're not taken by surprise. And obviously if there's no queue, everything is a bonus. Haven't seen a change of speed limit sign, still in an area with consistent street lights and no other repeaters, so we're going to deem it as a maximum of 30. Travel now on a different type of surface, it's a concrete, so you might hear a bit of a rumble uh, coming up through the vehicles, that's fine. It's obviously a lot noisier than the normal tar macadam. Uh, approaching a roundabout, you can see the warning triangle there, we're going to take the third exit to the right. So again, early procedures that your instructor or family friend has taught you. Make sure you scan and plan. Don't leave it until you're right on the roundabout for any possible gap. And we're going to work round. Always remember, check before you indicate left in case you have to do the loop round again. Another roundabout coming up quite soon. Uh, we're in uh, John Street at the moment. We're going to take the third exit to the right. So again, just positioning to the right hand lane. Early scan and plan tells me a vehicle has already passed the third, sort of three o'clock mark. Wee bit of a hill, any incline at all, always handbrake unless the car has got an automatic one. Now entering on, no actual markings on this road. 
but I'm just trying to stay fairly close to the roundabout without looking at it too much in case I drive onto it. Checking again, indicating left. You can see parked cars in the left lane, so I'm just positioning early to go round them before I get caught in behind. And we've now entered Frederick Street in Newton Hart. Next set traffic light's going to go straight on. I can see it's a straight set with no left filter arrow, which indicates that there's going to be straight in at least the left hand lane. So I'm quite a bit back from the traffic lights. So I may not get this initial green light. It could just be an edge up further up the queue. Just checking obviously for bikes and motorbikes that could filter. And then always making sure the vehicle in front moves off in case the stall and go for the wrong gear. I'm gonna follow the silver car now. I'm not indicating like they are. I'm just gliding in. I don't wanna look like a left turn. And then lights are green to proceed, which I can. And we're now traveling across the junction. Again, that 15 seconds ahead, now thinking, what's that silver car doing? Are they getting let the people into the junction? We've now entered William Street, again, 30 mile an hour area, because the area would be fully lit by street lights at half two in the morning, regardless of day of the year. Quite a few parked cars, but on this side, they're in laybys, all right? But again, just anticipate there's somebody in each car ready to open the door or somebody to take them on average a meter stride out. Again, we're going to travel straight on. So unless you're told different left or right, you always follow the road ahead. We can see it's marked in this lane. So normal checks for bikes, etc. If it's going to be more a wait than a pause, going to apply the handbrake. And now we've got green, safe to proceed. The black car is heading out. Hopefully he's going to hold back for us, but never trust him totally. And we've now entered Crawfordsburn Road. So again, park vehicles here. So I'm sort of hovering near the ghost island there in the center. Don't worry if you borrow a bit of road, if need be, because um, you're always looking enough space to go past or drop the speed if you don't. Park vehicle coming up. So I'm checking both mirrors, going to give an indicate for the car behind. So again, I'm borrowing a bit of road and then just make sure you check before you come back in in case the vehicle starts to move off. This one here, I'm not indicating because I'm staying in my lane, but I'm dropping the speed there just with the constriction of the other vehicles. Still in a 30 mile an hour area, although there's a little bit more sort of growth and trees, we're still in an urban environment just with a bit of green ring. Now, shortly we're gonna take a road off to the left. You might be able to see a bit of a sort of slope there on the grass. It's gonna do our normal approach, checking, giving information to vehicles behind. Drop it down to second because when you turn in, you never know what you're going to meet. It could be a very, very steep hill, very, very sharp corner. And we've now entered into Saratoga Avenue. Uh, quite a busy, well, quite a quiet residential area, I suppose I would say. But you're going to get sort of a few cars coming through. So again, don't always think I need to do the full 30. It's at a speed that's relevant to the road and traffic conditions. Traveling down, got various side roads, various driveways, etc. Uh, mostly give way junctions, so the sight lines will be good. But uh, the thoughts are people are sort of quite close to home or quite near home when they're coming back. People can sort of drop the guard a wee bit with the concentration. Traveling down, we've got parked cars now on the other side, so we're anticipating people may be positioning in the center. Again, I'm sort of keeping in around about 20 here, second gear in the vehicle I'm driving. And we're traveling down and if you find it easing off the throttle isn't sufficient to maintain the speed always give a touch of the brake as well because it's going to send information out with the three brake lights just positioning there in the center didn't indicate even though it was going over the center right line because there's nobody to benefit from it and surely we're coming up to a t junction that's a closed junction because you can't see clearly on both sides as you approach checking the mirrors again indicating is a preference okay so I'm just going to indicate, because I do see a wee bit of activity around, just uh, with other road users. As long as your indicator is not confusing, either wrong side too early or too late, it's not an issue. So we've now entered on the Glenford Road. Again, we're still in that 30 there with a consistent light. Some of the lights may be on electricity or telephone poles, so watch out for them. And we're going to come up to a giveaway junction, and we're going to turn right. So it's a normal earlier checks, indicating about six car lengths back. Uh, positioning just if need be and impossible sorry we're just right beside the center white line quite a busy road that we're going to go on to so i'm going to apply the handbrake because it's a manual one got a few cars turning in it's quite busy at the time we were doing this video it was sort of school time etc and again we've now entered on the hartford link 
and I'm just positioning to the right hand lane here because I'm going to go right at the next set of traffic lights. So again we can see we've got a choice of straight or right. So checks and an indicator here will give benefit. Traveling up again behind the silver car, leaving tires and tarmac, a few cars back. So I'm just going to go handbrake neutral, give the foot a wee bit of a rest, the left leg, etc. I'm pushing down just on the footrest, which is beside the clutch pedal, and that just keeps the circulation going. So again, remember when the lights go green, you're not guaranteed because people could break down, there could be an incident, there could be an emergency vehicle trying to pass through. So always remember that green is proceed if it's clear to do so. Try not to daydream too much by looking in shops or other vehicles, etc. Look at the vehicle in front, look at the vehicle behind, check for bikes, etc. And uh, if you were closer to the junction, you might be able to look into the road you're going for any sort of early warning of potential roadworks and things like that. So this is a four-way junction, so sometimes you may get one side goes at a time. And um, you probably can't see just at this position, but there is a filter arrow to the right. Some of them will come on straight away. Some will maybe delay for about 15, 20 seconds. So we'll sort of see what this one does when we get a little bit closer to it. I can see as well, pedestrians just over in the right. I've activated now what looks like a, a puffin crossing because it does have sensors. So it may come in to slightly delay, but we're now moving with the traffic. And we can see the left filter arrows come on straight away, which means go in that direction, unhindered, unless obviously there's a blockage or emergency vehicle needs to come through. We've now turned on to Belfast Road, checking no change of speed limit signs. So we're going to deem this still as a 30, and there is your consistent street lights to back that up as well. Quite a wide road, very, very easy for the speed to go up. So normally what I would do is third for 30, fourth for 40, and that should be quite similar to most vehicles. Because if you go to fourth at 30, sometimes the car can be quite sluggish, and that then sort of mentally encourages people to go quicker to make it sound or feel smoother. Looking ahead, I can see a change of speed limit. We've got a 40 zone coming up, but remember the speed limit does not start until your level mirrors with those poles. Early checks for any early overtakes, and if not, the road conditions allow. Well, then now we're up to the 40 if now selected fourth gear in this vehicle depending on your vehicle, it could be fourth or fifth. Now this road has quite a series of bends, so I'm always just trying to take a good position, use the road accordingly, and when you're going up a hill like this, quite a sort of climb, you know, keep increasing the pressure like a pound coin things at a time, just so you're maintaining the speed, but not necessarily giving it too much of a boost to go over. Bit of a ghost island there in the centre, obviously protecting a right turn, waiting for the traffic coming down. Long white lines in the centre indicating hazards, so hills, corners, junctions, or maybe a combination of some, if not all of them. So now we're sort of getting slow on the road, which is speed lower, observe warning, a good way to think about it. So there's possibly been history on this stretch of road, because slow could mean different types of speed for different types of vehicles. And we're just following the contour around. Always check your mirrors as well every sort of eight to ten seconds at the very um, furthest point. So we'll keep up to date. And remember, driving is like live television on the move. Getting a wee bit further out from the town now, so we're possibly expecting a change of speed. And there we've got our national, which is 60, the likes of cars, motorbikes, off the R plates and L plates. But obviously, you could have your restrictions of your 45 for your training and your first year. So we're still in a bit of a climb here. Corners are getting sort of further apart. There's maybe a bit of straight between some of them. And these type of roads, very, very easy sometimes to drop the concentration. And that also uh, can sometimes affect how quick you react. So remember driving as much as you can is a full-time job. Thinking ahead, planning ahead. got a road work sign there on the left so I anticipate probably lanes closed temporary traffic lights something like that you could find that it's literally one cone and a little bit of a rough area but always expect major interruptions in the road and obviously if you don't get that well then obviously it's an easier passage so we're in the national speed limit um, there is a few lights maybe lighting up this individual corner etc um, but they're not consistent that's the main thing 
Bay. Now we seem to have reached the summit of where the gradient was going up to. Now we're starting to come down, so you may find that the car starts to run away with you. So again, if ease and off's not good, have that foot brake covered, ready just to give an early sort of gentle squeeze. Remember, like a pound coin thickness at a time, so you're not reducing speed too quickly, should anybody be behind you. Now obviously, if somebody's behind you quite close, okay, they have to take in regard the distance they give, but you need to be wary as the brake pressure you put on. And never slam brakes on to scare people behind. Because if they're not able to react in time, it could cause quite a serious collision. Travelling down here now, I'm, I'm not really accelerating uh, at all. I'm just letting gravity sort of carry the car down. I can now see the white lines are going to a shorter. And we've got a cat's eye after every two, which indicates more of an open view. So if you needed an overtake, this would be the safest type of line, obviously, of traffic uh, coming towards you was permitting. cyclists there so just check and make sure they're not coming around any sort of drains etc maybe dogs running out because cyclists sometimes do have to take a base of action as well so once we get around this corner and the road straightens out you will see a junction at the end of the road where we're going to emerge to the left onto the sort of Dundonald to Arch carriageway you can see dual carriageway ahead telling you they're having to sort of uh, have a central reservation. Speed limit now is down to 40 from this point on until we're told different. So it's a closed junction again the view's not there so normal approach sequence quite a wide junction try and get sort of tucked in that sort of 10 to 10 if you imagine the clock face. Quite a bit of traffic approaching here from the right but if traffic lights further down so if need be I'll wait for the traffic lights to change on the gap then to uh, start to form for me. Remember, at junctions, you could be here for 10 seconds, 10 minutes. It's all about when you're able to emerge out without stopping anybody, causing them to brake heavily or swerve. So my gap's going to come up just after this white car. Obviously, in a dual carriageway, always position in the left lane, unless you're having the overtake or position for a right turn. There's our national, so that for us is obviously up to 45. But it's 70 miles an hour, for instance, in a car, if the driver was off their provisional. Now what that can do is that can cause a lot of people when they're training to go too fast because they get drawn along with the speed of other traffic. Remember as much as you're checking your mirrors check your speed as well. So top mirror, left mirror, check the speed, check the right. Do that quite often, keep yourself informed. The other thing when you're driving dual carriageways is look as far ahead as you can and that hopefully will reduce drifting because people sometimes look too far to the right and then they're starting to drift to the centre white line and to the left uh, and so on. Further ahead we've got um, two warning triangles and it looks like there is a road off to the right and you've got your reduced speed now. So again that's letting you know as well that you could have cars maybe braking quite heavily who you haven't anticipated the road was coming up that soon. So we're traveling along, checking the speed, okay, lifting off the throttle, see what gravity can add on, because you might find it can add on quite a bit. Depending on the vehicle, you may be in the fifth at this stage. I'm quite happy in fourth, as the vehicle feels capable and comfortable. Dual carriageway sections, quite similar to rural road sections, very, very easy to switch off because it's just either barrier or green, a very, very similar thing coming past you. White lines can come very hypnotic as well. A lot of collisions do happen when people, you know, unsurprisingly, are not expecting it. Again, a road off to the left there, so we've got our off slip. So there's no vehicles in front, so there's nobody to late brake on this occasion. But I'm just sort of checking there to see if anybody's going to come out. This road leads down to the large roundabout just at the Arch Shop Centre and it is very, very easy from now to pick up a lot of speed. So again, see what gravity does and if need be a gentle touch of your brake. But the car I'm in seems to be holding speed quite well. Checking in the mirrors, um, looking for overtake and traffic as well. Because sometimes vehicles can startle you and motorbikes and stuff like that there. So if you're sort of expecting it, the noise then hopefully shouldn't. 
and there's one coming past us quite quickly there, just on the road. Not necessarily over the speed limit, but obviously, you know, they're going faster than what we are. So we've got a roundabout warning triangle. What we're going to do at this roundabout is take the uh, third exit. So shortly I'm going to position to the right hand lane. So early mirror checks, make sure middle and the right hand indicates. Double check a 90 degree check out the side window. Nice gentle glide over. Close enough to the roundabout that I can keep the right hand signal on. And uh, if need be, go for a block change. So I'm going to go fourth to second. Ease the clutch the full way up there just to get engine braking. You'll get a wee kickback of revs, which is fine. Scan and plan on the roundabout. Look for any possible gap. And if it's safe, enter right hand lane, small c. It's quite a large roundabout here. So again, you can take it a little bit quicker, but it does pick up a bit of speed as well on the gradient. Normal leave procedure, always check before you end to get left in case you need to go for a go around. And we've now entered Blair Main Road. 30 mile an hour speed. We had a speed limit of 30 at the roundabout just before and haven't seen another one since. Quite shortly we'll be at another roundabout called Scrabo Road roundabout. So we're just doing normal procedures, first exit off. And scan and plan, make sure the vehicle in front is moving as well. And follow where it says town centre. And we're now on a Scrabble Road. Now we can see we've got parked cars on either side, so again, we're dropping maybe at least five for each side, so I'm doing about 20. If I can give a wee bit more room, if there's nobody coming towards, go for it. Borrow a bit of road within reason. If you feel it's quite constricted off the throttle, because what you're doing in most town areas, urban areas, you're negotiating safety through. You very, very seldom will make time up. Traffic lights coming up. We're going to turn to the right. So early procedure. And we can see a wee bit of a ghost island there developing just in the lights. And that's probably to keep us away from the likes of the white car parked. So don't drive in that unless you have no other option. There we go. Tires and tarmac with the white, the white vehicle. I do beg your pardon in front. Handbrake neutral, give the feet a bit of a rest. You can stand first if you want, but uh, with a handbrake on. But you know, speak to your instructor, see what is more suitable for yourself. But remember, red number is your sort of get ready, get the biting point sort of lights. You're not going to move anyway to green, so you do have those vital seconds to do that. So there we go, getting ready. We can see we've got the uh, right arrow on, no emergency vehicles that I can hear. So I'm going to travel in here unhindered. Good speed ramps now, speed humps, traffic calming, different turns, etc. The first ramp and the last ramp in a lot of areas is sometimes the highest to alert you. And I'm going to stay in second gear here as my highest gear. I'm not going to go for third. That just cuts out a lot of clutch work, which could um, obviously cut out a lot of fuel as well. So you might sort of gain a um, bit more economy for less work. Looking down, we've got a pedestrian crossing. Always look to see, is there anybody near the button? And uh, it looks like a puffin crossing, possibly because it's got sensors there on top of the lights. Quite a few ramps, probably because we're just passing a large grammar school. Um, the time this was done, was sort of late afternoon, so it looks like most of the traffic's away. But remember, you get the likes of sports, PTA meetings, um, drama group, stuff like that. So school sometimes can stay up at quite a while past that sort of half three average. So we're in circular road, by the way, and this is going to lead us up to a set of traffic lights where we're going to turn right. So as, as well as doing your checks, always look for any side roads on approach, which may confuse with indicating. got a green light we've got a couple of vehicles in front just give them a second or so just to move out and when I come around I'm just going to position to the right hand lane here because I'm going to take another right quite soon at the next set of traffic lights this is Cumber Road A21 so there's our next set of lights so again normal checks normal procedure lights green at the moment but it could change Now, this set of uh, traffic lights is a roundabout quite close there, you'll see, and sometimes people do not look at the speed of traffic coming off the roundabout. 
And if you're the front car, and if you've got studs there, make sure you clear that, and that's your holding area if you have to wait for the gap in the oncoming. So I'm just bringing the vehicle to a halt, as well as looking for the gap, and checking into the road on the right to make sure it is safe to proceed. And remember, you can finish your turn on amber or red if the gap is safe to take. We've now entered back into Jubilee Road, the industrial area where we started today's route. Still a few scattered cars, etc. A lot of places closed, obviously half four or five o'clock, etc. Sometimes areas are unmarked because it's not that heavily used of a road. And obviously if they do mark it out, they would have to maintain that maybe every 18 months to two years or so. So roads are assessed on the up view. Okay, just check and round, parked vehicles. Quite a wide road, so I didn't enter over the center. Maybe hovered here, so I'm just gonna give a slight indicate, a second or two. Checking before I slide back to make sure the car's not starting to move. And we're just gonna come up here and uh, we're going to pull up just before the, uh, the gates of the driving test MOT Centre in Newton Arts. So remember, any time you pull in, handbrake neutral unless the handbrake's automatic, cancel any indicator that may be on, take the foot off the brake, see if the handbrake's held, just in case you might need to go for an extra notch up. So folks, hopefully you enjoyed that, another route there around the uh, Newton Ards area. And remember to like and subscribe to Intensive Driving Courses NI and hit the bell for further notifications. And remember, all these videos are designed for advice and sort of working on what you see on the drive as we took it. It's not designed to change the teaching from your current instructor or family friend. Keep a lookout for more videos to come up and uh, all the best.